and I basically I just model my approach to planes from the way we approach lines. Normally, uh, what is called the vector equation of the plane is something uh, something like this. Uh, to present the equation, you need three vectors, three vectors in, in general in Rn, like this, A, B, and C. Normally, when you think about these vectors, you position them in your head when you're imagining things, or when you yeah, imagine things. You position them like this. A is a vector which points, which is a position vector corresponding to some point in, in your n-dimensional space. And B and C are the vectors which will be the directional vectors to your plane. And then having this free set or given in any way, uh, the formal, formal expression like this is something which is called parametric or vector equation of plane. Two Greek letters here, lambda and mu, they're just parameters similar to the parameter t, which we used uh, which we use in, in our parametrization for the line. This time, it's more conventional to use Greek letters. We need two parameters this time rather than one parameter. But apart from the, just the Greek letters, there is no different to T or S. In fact, sometimes uh, another very often candidate for the names of the parameters is the pair of letters T and S. Uh, let me just move it a bit higher. So... Basically, it's the, the reason why we call this a vector equation uh, parametrization for a plane is the same as the reason we call the similar equation for uh, similar parametrization when, when we discussed lines with you. Uh, the reason is that when you altering freely your values of lambda and mu, when you set different values to this lambda and mu in any way you wish, the tip of the vector x, it will be traveling across this plane, this schematic plane which I pictured for you here. I have some um, partial demonstration of this fact. Uh, for instance, if you... Let me just move it. For instance, if you set parameter mu here to value 0, it can be the case, which means that your C vector here won't be contrib contributing to to the parametrization, all you will come, all you will end up with will be a plus lambda b, and that will be the parametrization of the line, the line which will be within your plane, the plane, the line which will be here. Here it is. I think it's this line. Yes. So this is the line which is within my bigger plane, which will correspond to the choice of the pairs of lambda and mu. <coughs> I'm sorry. Which will correspond to the choice of the pairs of lambda and mu, where mu intentionally set to zero and lambda is still freely running. If you do the opposite, of, this is a line which corresponds to the intentional set mu equals zero. Similarly, you can set, for instance, <coughs> you can set, for instance, lambda. I'm sorry. <coughs> Similarly, you can set lambda to zero, in which case your vector b will no longer be contributing to your x vector, and in that case, you will come up again with a line within your bigger plane, but this time it will be this line. This time it will be this line. This line. That's the line which will correspond to the choice lambda zero and mu any any number you wish you just still let a mu run freely you can play with this further for instance if you take if you if you make the choice rather than mu equals zero if you make the choice for instance mu equal one half this choice who can tell me what kind of subset of my plane will correspond to this specific choice imagine here is no longer uh, mu is no longer zero, it's always one half, which means that C contributing to my parametrization, but contributing all the time a constant fraction. We don't, we don't alter that parameter anymore. In that case, it will be the line which will, which will be parallel to my line which disappeared from here, but not for the tip of the vector A, shifted by half of the length C in this direction. It will be this line, this line. You see, I took my mu one half rather than zero, and the line which was here, 
originally for mu equals zero, it, it shifted by half the length of C in the direction of C. That's, I think that's more or less gives you the idea why we call this parameterization of the plane. By altering this mu with different values and keeping them fixed and letting lambda run freely, you will have the whole set of self-parallel lines which will trace the whole plane for you. That's why, that's like a, uh, well, I consider this a good demonstration of why we call this, uh, this formula the parametric or vector equation of the line. It's a good incentive to call this parametric or vector equation. Of course, like I said many times already, when you go to higher dimensions, you no longer can expect any geometrical representation for this, but our, we just base our judgments or terms or intuition or our, on our experience with three dimensions. Now, in a similar way with the line, there is another very common way to present parametric equation for the plane. Uh, when rather than you have three vectors symbolizing one of them symbolizing the point on the plane and the other two give you the directional vectors, there's another way to set the plane where you're given, again, three vectors, and that's the setting here, when you're given three vectors, A0, A1, A2, but this time, this time, these three, they stand for the position or for the points on the plane, like on this picture. You may see... Uh, like this kind of questions very often and again you will need to produce the parametric vector equation which will correspond to the plane through the tips of these three vectors of course this sub problem it can be reduced to this original setting right by taking the differences between a1 and a0 you can come up with the vector here by taking the difference between a2 and a0 you can come up with the vector here and here, here you are you're back to the original setting back to this setting however it's from the efficiency point of view and from some other points of view, it is still worth remembering the direct answer to this setting uh, separate to this original setting of a plane. And the answer here, that's how, that's how we normally parameterize the, that's how we present the vector equation for the plane in case we have this different, slightly different setting. We use the vectors pointing at my three points, a0, little a0, little a1, and little a2. Uh, we choose two of them with the parameters, we will factor two of them with the parameters lambda and mu, and the third vector is factored with a bracket like this. If you remember our discussions on, of convex combinations, you can feel the sense of a comp convex combinations here too. It's slightly different to what we saw earlier because back then we had only one parameter there and here we have two lambda and mu but significantly significantly uh, this I mean the you can make this observation that if you take this factor and if you add with this factor and you add with this factor together three of them they will give you one that's the reason that the, why, why we call this also a convex combination because the factors we position next to my little a naught little a one and little a2, if you sum them up, they will be one. So next time, if you have a, if you need to run a vector, uh, if you need to run a plane through tips of three vectors, the direct answer to that, if you remember that, will be this, uh, this vector equation. Now, it wasn't a surprise I opened the, because I want to discuss with you what happens with the special cases of this vector equation when, again, when you preset your sum of the parameters to particular values. And I opened up the value mu equals zero. What will happen with this vector equation if mu will go into zero? If you vanish mu here, so you, you vanish the whole term, uh, this negative mu will disappear. If you set mu equals zero across this general vector equation, you will come up with the equation like this. This mu disappeared, and this term disappeared. If you look closely into this, you will tell me that this is what? This is, is, it, this is the convex version of the parameterization of the line. Which line? The line which goes through the tips of the vectors little a naught and little a one. So it's this line. So setting mu equals zero in this version of the parameterization of the plane basically parameters for you the line A0, A1. 
or if you go a little bit further if you also put some extra constraints on your second parameter on parameter lambda for instance like this then that will be not the entire line but also uh, that only will be the the segment strictly between a naught and a1 so it will be exactly the side of this triangle a naught a1 a2 so you see by by restricting the freedom of my parameters lambda and mu in my general parameterization of the plane I can come up with the subsets of the plane. Well, we can do it in many different ways, but some standard ways of restricting the freedom of these parameters and coming up with the standard, standard subspaces of the plane, something which you have to remember because some questions in tutorials rely on this knowledge. And here I show you one of the standard ways. When you vanish one of the parameters, confine the other one between two points, you come up with a segment with the side of the triangle on which you base your plane because this line here it is you can do similar similar things for instance if I ask you how would you how would you come up with the subspace or how would you come up with the uh, subset of the parameters which will correspond to the line a naught a2 well the answer to that will be I have to take lambda equals zero if I take lambda equals zero across this general uh, parameterization of the plane, it will leave, it will vanish this mu, sorry, the other way around. It will vanish this lambda and will kill this term. The result of this will be something like this. And that's again parameterization of the line in the convex form as we know it. And though it is a different line, it's a line which runs through the tips of the vector A0 and A2. So by taking lambda equals zero, you will come up with the parameterization for this line. Do you know how to come up with the parameterization for the line A1, A2? What should we, how, sh how should we confine my indices, lambda and mu, to end up with the A2 and A1 line? Yes, please. That's right. We have to vanish this one. Uh, if um, in order to vanish this one, we have to set lambda plus mu equal one. So if I consider the restriction like this, which will vanish the first bracket, if you take this restriction, if you solve this restriction for, sorry, say mu, that will be the solution. If you sub in your mu in the in the third term here with this with the solution, that's how your equation of the plane will start looking. And that is exactly the parameterization, convex form of the parameterization of the line through the points A2 and A1. Now, if you look at this a little bit further, you will realize that if you start doing something like this, if you take now, you can, you can play with this, uh, you can play this game by taking subsets of the pairs of lambda and mu and see what kind of subsets of the plane that will correspond to. It's an interesting game. There are lots of interesting questions here. Uh, and I can't list all of them, or I can't give you like a, uh, like a uh, unified algorithm which will let solve you everything. The only thing you can rely on is just you look at the standard, standard examples of the subsets and the standard restrictions, and then the rest is just your intuition and the experience how to do more advanced ones. For instance, let's just look at this one. It's, it's more or less a standard one. Let me just lift it, up, lift, it up, lift it up a little bit. Let's just look at the restriction like this. I'll take non-negative lambdas. I'll take non-negative mu's. And I'll take also another restriction which says lambda plus mu is less or equal than 1. It's sort of like restriction. I'm no longer let my lambda be absolutely freely, uh, uh, absolutely any take absolutely any value. This time, I just take only those which match these this free inequalities. What do you think will be the subset of my plane which will correspond to this free? Yeah, well, with this extra comment, I will I will accept that. Yes, true. So basically, the the answer is the answer was uh, said already. Uh, these free inequalities will correspond to the this triangle, including the interior of this triangle. And the reason for that is that because we tested the sides of that, if you take the equal sign here, strictly equal sign here, 
It was that was the argument we, which we put in in here. It was this line. If I put this strictly equal sign in here, it will be this side of my triangle. And if I put this strictly equal sign in here, it will be this side of the triangle. From that, it's a little bit further, you need to do a little bit further to realize that when you take the inequalities like that, that will be the interior of the triangle, not the exterior of that. But I'll leave it to you, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to, for your ind independent thinking, this, this piece of it. Minor, minor little piece. The, the basic part is the boundary. When we put the equal sign here, equal sign here, and equal sign here, we come up with the boundary of this unknown area, and having the boundary, it's already easy to decide what's the interior, what's the exterior of this. Yes. Now, let me ask you this then. What if I want to parameterize not the triangle, but the parallelogram, this one? What kind of restrictions on lambda and mu uh, I will need to, to impose in order to correspond to this parallelogram? So this one, it's a triangle oh, Jesus. with interior. Uh, but what about the parallelogram? The one which will, will which the one which will correspond to parallelogram, parallelogram a not a one a three a two. Remember we just we had this convention. Uh, it will be the conditions like this. Uh, if, just be careful when you read this line. It's not like it's a it's not like lambda bigger than zero and mu less than one. In fact, the line says both lambda and mu between zero and one. So if you take lambda and mu between zero and one, but no any other restrictions are put on those, like this one, then the result will be the whole parallelogram like this.